What are some of the environmental impacts of the mountaintop removal mining on the streams, the, the water and wetlands, uh, or air or other aesthetic uh, impacts from the mountaintop removal mining? Before we focus on the impact on the communities and the economy. Sure. Um, well, there, there are many uh, externalities produced by mountaintop removal mining. Uh, one of them, of course, is related to uh, uh, the use of valley fills to dispose of the, the overburden of the rock that overlies the coal seams. Uh, and it's most cost effective for coal companies simply to take that rock, uh, put it in these big rock trucks and dump it into uh, adjacent uh, valleys containing headwater streams uh, that feed the, the principal watersheds in central Appalachia. Uh, rather than return the, that overburden, or it's also called spoil, uh, to the mined area. One of the principal requirements, core principles of the Federal Surface Mining Act that was passed in 1977 was that co-operators were required to return the mine land to its approximate original contour, or AOC as it's called in the business. And so um, uh, when that statute was enacted after a 10-year struggle by coal field communities and activists to, to rein in the uh, serious abuses of strip mining that were occurring in the 1950s, 1960s, all the way up until the, the uh, laws enacted in 1977. Uh, uh, what people wanted to see in the coal fields was that the land was no longer left open and subject to soil erosion, uh, stream sedimentation, flooding from the denuding of, of uh, uh, mountain slopes of, of timber. So they wanted the land returned to its approximate original contour. That was in the law. But uh, at the time, there were a couple of senators from uh, Central Appalachia, from Kentucky and West Virginia, who listened to the coal industry uh, and advocated for an exception to the requirement that one land be returned to its approximate original contour for mountaintop removal of mining. And at that time, there was no concept of this use of huge equipment uh, to remove coal in the way that it, uh, that it is being done uh, uh, 20 years later. But nevertheless, that provision of the law uh, allowed an exemption from the requirement of uh, returning the mine land to proximal original contour. But there was a trade-off that made sense. If, uh, and the trade-off in the act was that if uh, a, a waiver or exemption was given to a coal company to conduct mountaintop removal mining operations, then uh, they had to present to the regulatory authority plans of uh, to uh, provide a post-mining land use that was, uh, uh, would provide sustainable jobs. And so the, the statute refers to uh, industrial, commercial, residential, agricultural, uh, post-mining land uses. So what the coal companies were supposed to do, if they wanted to conduct mountaintop removal operation with, the, with its the huge environmental externalities, uh, what communities would get back were jobs. Industrial, residential, there would be uh, something ongoing. It wouldn't be the old uh, shoot and shove, blow apart the, the mountainside and leave it, you know, leaching pollution in the streams and so forth. There would be jobs. And, um, uh, Unfortunately, uh, that provision has never really been enforced by regulatory agencies, either the state uh, 
regulators or the Federal Oversight Agency, the Department of Interior, Office of Surface Mining. Yeah, and so um, uh, a, a tremendous opportunity to change the boom-bust economic cycle in the coal fields has been lost by, by the uh, lack of political and regulatory will to enforce a, a clear mandate of the, of the law. Um, now, uh, with regard to environmental impacts of, uh, uh, of mountaintop removal, valley fills bury headwater streams. Head, um, headwater streams, uh, aquatic biologists tell us, uh, uh, provide the, the biological food, so to speak, for a watershed. Uh, they're essential uh, to a healthy downstream watershed. All the small microscopic uh, uh, plants and animals uh, that populate these uh, uh, intermittent and perennial small streams in, in central Appalachia at the head of hollows uh, are crucial to downstream health of the ecological health of watersheds. So first of all, uh, mountaintop removal mine uh, might create three, four, five, six valley fills. Uh, valley, valleys and the heads of hollows are filled two, three, four hundred feet deep with uh, the, uh, the spoil from the mine site. Um, uh, and the, the length of the film may be a mile or two miles long. Uh, so some refer uh, to valley fills as decapitating watersheds. Uh, the, the, uh, the source of biological health for downstream watersheds or upstream in these uh, uh, intermittent and perennial uh, uh, headwater streams. So that's a major impact, and, and uh, more recently, as a result of litigation that I was involved in, uh, EPA did an environmental impact uh, uh, study, uh, a programmatic study, to uh, uh, analyze the effects of mountaintop removal on an area-wide regional basis. And that study uh, produced uh, evidence that's been developed uh, subsequently by scientists that show uh, very definitely uh, major adverse impacts on stream ecology downstream from mountaintop removal mines.